Hi there, and welcome to Module 3 of the Introduction to Python series. Uh, today we're going to be covering loops, uh, so I'll have the link in the video description for this uh, module, and uh, yeah, let's get right into it. <clears throat> so, first of all, so what are loops? So in the last uh, module we covered everything to do with uh, conditionals, and uh, so that was the if statements, as well as operators, <clears throat> so being able to check if something is of a certain, uh, hit meets a certain criteria and then returning a boolean and then being able to execute different code based on that. So loops kind of have the same idea, except for the difference is it allows you to have uh, code run over and over again uh, and iterate through as many times as you need it to until a certain condition is met. Um, a good example of this is if you want to print the numbers from one to 10, then you could do that with a loop and it would just continuously run until it hit once 10. So I guess we'll actually, we'll start with that example. Um, <clears throat> so we'll start off with what's called a while loop. And so let's say we have, um, let's pick something like uh, an end value. And let's say that's 10. Uh, and so this will be value to end loop on. All right. And so let's say uh, while Let's, let's do this, let's do count equal to zero. And then while count is less than the end value, print count count plus equal to one. Okay, so what is this doing? So basically, so this count value uh, is a value that we're gonna be continuously going we're going we're gonna to keep adding numbers to it. So at the end here of this loop, what we're saying is that we're just going to keep adding one to this count value. So it's going to first start at zero. And then while it's less than the end value, so while it's less than 10, we're going to print the current value, and then we're going to add one to it. So let me just quickly open up a CMD here. And we'll just go Python module three dot pi. And we'll go ahead and run it. You'll see we'll get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So you can see just in set, well, so five lines of code, uh, we can get something that loops over and runs 10 times. So there's a bunch of different situations where this is going to be useful. There's actually a ton of them in computer science. Uh, but let me explain how what actually happened at each of each step of this. And I believe I actually have... Yeah, I do. So this is going to be, so I'm just going to be using something here called Python preview. And so we're just going to go back to the first. This is going to be helpful because it's going to show us exactly what's actually happening at each stage. And so the arrow is just what current uh, line is running. And then we'll see over here what's actually being created. So if we go forward, you'll see, so we've created a value called end value. Now we've stepped ahead to here. And then so that's just equal to 10. We have a value called count. And now we're starting our um, our loop here. And so now we've moved into it and we have the first thing that happens is gonna print counts. You'll see it goes to zero. And then we have count plus equals to one. So you'll see the count value here is gonna go up by one. And um, basically it's gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna go through on the while value and it's just gonna go through and it's gonna print again. And you see there it is right there. And then it's gonna add one to count value and then keep going. Now this is gonna keep happening and as you can see, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then at nine, now the value is nine, so it's still less. So it's gonna go through one more time. It's gonna print nine. And then now, count value is gonna be equal to 10. And so when it gets up here, it's no longer less than the end value because the end value is 10. And so 10 is obviously not less than 10. And so this is gonna return false, which means we're then going to break out of the loop and because nothing else is happening, the program's gonna end. So that's how a loop, that's how a while loop works. Um, there's, uh, this is useful for a whole bunch of things. Uh, you can actually add this, you can kind of sprinkle in some conditionals in here. Um, so for example, if I wanted to say, if count modulus two, is equal to zero. So if the number is even, print number is even. 
Okay, and then if we run this this time, what we'll see is that every time the number is even, so zero, the number is even, two, the number is even, four, the number is even, six, the number is even, and eight, the number is even. So you can see how this can become very powerful. Um, and so that's that's effectively what a while loop does. It just, says, it just means that if this value is true, then do everything that's inside the what's called the loop body here. So this is the exact same as conditionals where you just have one indentation level in and that creates the loop body. And then this is this is what's called the terminating condition. And so this basically just says when it should end. And then um, the while is what's called the loop type. And so that's all of the components of this. There's, there's another type of loop called a for loop. Um, and I will go over that in just one second here, but I'm actually gonna skip ahead a little bit if you're reading on the documents at the same time. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit to break. Uh, and so what break does is let's say um, we had let's say uh, we had an infinite loop. Now this is not a good idea. So that with loops, you can actually make what's called an infinite loop. So this basically means that this will never end. This loop will just keep happening permanently. Uh, it can cause issues where your hardware can crack, like your hardware can not crack. Your hardware can give out if you run out of memory, and there's a whole bunch of other issues that can pop up with this. So I really highly would recommend you not do this. But just for the sake of this example, let me just show you this. So let's say while true, and then what we'll do is actually we'll keep that count variable. And then we'll say if count is equal to 10, break, uh, else count plus equals to. So what this is going to do, so this break statement here, what this is going to do is it's just going to break the loop. So even though this is, this is an infinite loop that would normally run on forever, um, what it'll do is it'll actually run 10 times, which I'm going to want to print count, because otherwise you won't be able to see what's happening here. Print count. Okay, so now if we do this, we get 0 to 10. But if we actually comment out this break, I'm going to have to cancel this, but you'll see. Oh, uh, if count... Oh, uh, hold on. Let me just comment all this out and we'll just do count plus equals to one. So you'll see here when I do this, we get into thousands upon thousands of numbers. You can press control C or command C on a Mac um, to break out of that. <clears throat> but basically that would just run on forever. And so my machine held up with it pretty well. Uh, but if you're on a weaker laptop or anything like that, um, it really will, it, you're, it'll give out pretty quickly. I'm sorry, just taking a drink there. So yeah, so sorry, so the count, um, at the break statement rather, sorry. What that does is it just makes sure that if something hits here, then you want to break out. So let's say for example, um, I'm trying to think of a good example of this. Uh, let's say that you wanted to do something where um, someone has like an ID number just as an example, but let's say you have a screen and the screen can only display up to four digits. <clears throat> then what you could say is, let's change this to ID number like this. And what we'll do is we'll print the ID number and then we'll say if ID number is greater than nine, oh, oops, sorry. 9999, so basically, if the number, let's say the screen that you print ID numbers on can only go up to four digits, and you could say if the number is greater than that, then break, else we'll add one to the ID number, and then we'll just run this. Uh, I close my terminal, so I'm going to have to reopen it. So Python module three. And so now you see we'll run all the way up to um, where it would break. And so you can actually see where this is. This becomes a little bit of a problem because even with my logic that I've written here, you'll see it actually goes beyond that point. And so it loops back over. And so on that screen, you'd see that it would actually break it. Um, so this is, a, this is a bad method to do, but there are some valid cases. Uh, for example, if there's a certain value that somebody gives that would break something. So let's say, for example, you did some, I don't know, some error catching, for example. So some somebody enters in a number... 
uh, or somebody's supposed to enter in a number and they enter in like a letter and you just wanted to break out of the loop instead of trying to do whatever you're trying to do, this might be useful for that. A whole bunch of other useful use cases for it. Uh, this is a great example of one, but we'll leave it there just so you can see how this works. Basically, break just says whatever loop you're currently in, break out of it. Okay, so now uh, let's move on to the fun one, uh, which is for loops. And so for loops are incredibly useful. Um, just as an example, let's say we have something like shopping list, the classic example that I have from before. So we'll just do eggs, and we'll do whatever, sausage, we'll do cheese, let's just say that. So what you can do with for loops is you can say f something like this, so for item in shopping list, print item. And so what this will do is as we go through, it will just print each of these sections here. So let me just quickly open up Python preview again. And we'll go back to the beginning. And uh, can you actually see all of this? I'm going to have to drag this across. So as, as we're going through, so we have shopping list here, right? And so if we move forward, it's created this uh, egg, sausage, and cheese list here, right? And then now we're going into the for loop. And so the for loop, we have item. And so item, because what it does is it goes into the shopping list and it basically does, looks at the first value and it goes, oh, okay, so that value is eggs. And so it assigns eggs to item at the first iteration and then prints it. So now we'll get printed out item. It'll then go back up to the top and it'll look at whatever the next value is, which is sausage. It'll reassign itself to sausage and then print it. Go back up, check the next one. It'll see cheese, assign itself to cheese, and then print it. And then it'll look again, and it'll see, oh, we're at the end of the list, and it will just go ahead and move on to the next thing, which there isn't anything, so the program just ends there. So super useful for going through lists like this. Uh, you can also go through things like dictionaries. You can go through things like um, strings, actually. So that's another use, use, good use case for it. So let's say, for example, you wanted to check if there was an E in something. So let's just do that. Um, this has an E. And let's say for letter in here, you can just say if letter is equal to E, print this string has an E. And then, yeah, that's it. So now when we go through and run this, we'll get this string has an E. If we take the E out, we get nothing. So super useful um, for doing iteration for checking things. So like, for example, if you wanted to go ahead and let's say a common thing that I do is you have something like valid input. Let's say that's equal to false. And then you do this, and then you say if letter is equal to E, then you say valid input is equal to true. And then later on down the road, what you can do is you can say, if valid input print input is valid, else print invalid input given. Something like that. And so now, because this doesn't have an E, uh, let me just open up Python preview again so we can see this. Because this doesn't have an E, uh, I'm just going to go back to the first part here. We're just going to step through. It's going to go through and it's going to check. You can see here what's actually happening. So I'll just rewind that back a little bit. So you can see first it assigns letter to T, and then it goes through and it assigns it to H, checks, no, I, checks, no, S, checks, no, space, no, H, no, A, no, S, no, blank, no, A, no, N, no. And it sees that, nope, valid input is still false here. And then it's going to go through and it's going to say if valid input, which is currently false. So it's going to skip over this and it's just going to go to the else statement. And it's going to say invalid input given. And then if we go ahead and add an E this time, what we can do is we can go back to the very beginning and do the same thing. It's going to go through, check all of those values individually for us. And since 
Oh, there it is. So now because the letter is E, we get to this part where it says if letter is E, and then it changes valid input to true. And then now when we step down, valid input's true, so it's gonna print input is valid. In your case, if you're checking, for example, let's say you wanted to check if something has the first letter, has a first letter that's a capital letter, then you could go through and have each each capital letter and then just check if the list has it in there, or if the string rather has it in there as its first letter. <clears throat> And then you could do something like modify the first letter or whatever. Like there's a whole bunch of things you can do for this, but basically it works really well for doing validation if you need to do any validation. Uh, and for loops are super useful. Now, if you're coming from a language like Java or uh, PHP or anything like that, uh, then for loops in Python are all by default going to be what's called a for each loop. Um, and if you're new to programming, don't worry about that, but that's just a technical detail that a lot of people miss. This is not your standard for loop that you'd see in many C-like languages. Um, to do something along those lines, what you can do is you can, for example, if you want to have a four where you want to have a number, um, so let's just clear this out. We can do something like this. We can have four number in range, and then we'll just say zero to 10, print, oops, print number times number. So we'll just we'll square the number and then we'll just print it. And then for each case now what we can do is we can just go ahead and run this and you'll see we get uh, zero, which is zero squared, one, which is one squared, four, which is two squared, three, which is actually nine, which is three squared, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And so this range value basically tells you um, it basically does the same thing, where the actual number, I'll just show you what this actually looks like. The number itself, as we're going through here, uh, we'll go back to the very beginning, and you'll see all that this does is it just returns the numbers in the range. So it returns zero to number, and then goes through one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <clears throat> and it works much closer to your standard sort of uh, loop that you've seen in any other sort of C-like languages. One thing to keep in mind is that this range is not inclusive on the last value. So this last number here, um, as you can see, we never actually made it to 10. And that's because it won't actually make it to 10. If we want to go from 0 to 10, we have to actually do 0 to 11. And then it will go through all of them. Um, you can also omit the first number that, I've, that I gave there. So I, you can example, you can just do 11. It'll always default to 0, as you can see. I'll actually just expand this out a little bit. <clears throat> It'll always start at zero by default unless you specify a different number and it will always go to the end number minus one. So for example, if I wanted to go from one to 10, I'd actually do one to 11. Just a little bit of a weirdness, but yeah. This range function, basically what it does is it just returns all of the numbers from here to here. And the last little bit of, uh, well, there's, there's a couple little bit of weirdness left and then we'll get into the challenges. Um, the next one is just the continue statement. And so the continue statement basically, uh, let's say you only wanted to print the even numbers. Uh, you can actually just do something like this where you have, I'm just gonna close this preview here. Um, if the number is, even, so we'll do number mod two is equal to zero, print number, else continue. Uh, and so what this does, um, let me put something after this, got to here. Okay, so what this does, if we go ahead and run this, what you'll see is that on every time that the number is even, it will print the number and then it will get to, and then it will keep going, it'll skip over the else statement and then it'll print get, got to here. On every odd number, you'll see nothing, the got to here doesn't get printed because what happens is it just continues down here and then it sees this continue statement and what this says is go back up to the top of the loop and start from there. So the preview for this, let's reopen it back. The preview for this, you can see the number is one, which means that it fails this first check. So then it goes on to, oh, sorry. It fails the uh, the first check here with if the number is equal to two. It'll move on and then it'll go to the else and then it'll continue back up to the top. And then here, now it's two. So then it will skip over the else statement and then go print 
print got to here. Same thing again, it'll try and check, it'll get to the else statement, at which point it will then continue on again to the next iteration. Um, okay. So here is kind of the the weird weirdness with this. Um, you can actually do it called nesting. And so nesting, what it basically means is, let's say, for example, uh, you had a shopping list, uh, just to, to be really original. Um, so let's say you had a shopping list that you wanted to iterate over. Let's just do this. And so let's say that within the shopping list, you have a couple of um, sub lists. So let's say, for example, we have a shopping list with oops, a couple of internal lists. Let's say there's three people's shopping lists, or maybe even, uh, even better, let's say they're categorized. So let's say we have <clears throat> our first list is uh, like meats, so we have ham. Sausage and turkey. And then let's say our second list is like drinks. So let's say we have like Coke, Dr. Pepper, and oh, tell it Just for argument's sake. And then our third list, uh, let's say this is desserts. So let's just say um, I don't know, chocolate cake. Cupcakes and uh, is it two S's for moose? I think it's two S's for moose. I don't know. Anyways, so let's just say you have this. <clears throat> so this is what's called a two-dimensional array because you have what's called your first dimension, uh, which is the uh, outer list, and then the inner lists inside here. So if you wanted to actually access this, um, it, let's say for example I wanted to print ham. The way that I have to do this is I have to actually print shopping list with the first list being, I want the index zero of the first list, which gives me this list. So we'll just quickly print here what this looks like. Right, and so we have the first list here, which means that if I wanna get, uh, let's just say sausage, for example, because it's the second thing in the list, um, oops. then I need to actually print the first list and the second value in the first list, like that. And then I get sausage. And so this is what's called a two-dimensional array. Uh, and so the way that you'd actually iterate over something like this is you'd say for sub list in shopping list, and then for item in sub list, print, And so what this will do is if we go ahead and run this, this will print everything in all of the lists in order. And so the reason is the sub list, which I'll just show you here. As we go through, do, 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 do. so off the bat, we create the uh, shopping list. And so you can see it's, it's kind of complicated. You have the zeroth element is pointing to this list. The first if element is pointing to this list, and the second if element is pointing to this list. Um, and then within here, we have sublist. And so sublist is currently pointing to the first list. And then the item in that sublist is currently pointing to the ham item in here. And then it'll print out ham, go back up, check the sublist again, check for the next iteration, and then it'll find sausage, print that, and then it'll go back up, and it'll find turkey and then it will go ahead and print that. So you can see down here what's actually happening there. Uh, and then now it'll go back all the way up to line eight where you have for the sublist. It will then switch the sublist because you can see this arrow is currently, uh, I wish I could make this taller, but I can't. Um, but this arrow, it's kind of hard to see, but it's pointing to this first list. Now when we go ahead and point it forward, you'll see the arrow just switched. So you see it was originally there and then now it's pointing to the second list. The item value is still currently set to turkey from the previous list, but because we've now gone ahead in this for loop, we'll now go ahead in this for loop, it'll be reassigned to Coke, it'll print that, and then so on and so forth. It'll keep going, go through all of the different um, drinks, which is the second list, 
and then after that, it'll go back up and switch to the third sublist and then print all of that. So <clears throat> this is kind of complicated. Don't worry if you don't fully understand it, that's perfectly fine. Um, just be aware that it does exist uh, and you, you can work at it and get better at it. Though I think there might be examples in the challenges, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I guess we'll find out pretty quickly, but just keep this in the back of your mind that it is possible to do multiple um, m multiple loops all at once. So, yeah. Okay, uh, speaking of challenges, I guess right now is probably a good time for you to go ahead and go and download those. So, uh, if you remember from the last time, uh, if you go to the module page, you can just go ahead and click the little download link here, and then that will download that. Just hit keep and that'll download the exercises. And you can go ahead and try these beforehand and then we will, uh, and so we'll, uh, we'll get started working on them right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and start taking a look at these exercises. So <clears throat> take the current for loop below and add two conditions to the loop body. If eggs are the current element, then continue. If sausages is the current element, then stop iterating. Okay. So the first one, if eggs are the current element, so if item is equal to eggs, continue, and what was the second one? If item is equal to sausages, uh, then stop iterating, so that means break. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just remove that, and we can do an LF, and then other than that we'll just do else at the item, just so we can see what's happening in our loop. So let's just see if we got that right. Uh, oh, sorry, not module three, we need loops and exercises, which means I need to quickly. Uh, actually, it's probably faster for me to just do this. I'm well prepared, I promise you. There we go. Uh, Python. Python 101. Loops exercises.py. There we go. Okay. So, oh, sorry, there's some code running in the background. Um, okay, so what do we have? So we have bread, bananas, pineapples, oranges, and milk. Uh, so that means that it went through and it printed bread, it printed bananas, it printed pineapples, and did we skip eggs? Yep, we skipped eggs and went straight to oranges, which is what we wanted. Uh, we then went on to milk, which is what we wanted, and it didn't print sausages because it broke uh, the loop. And we can actually test it broke the loop by saying this shouldn't print. And didn't print. So yeah, all right. That was uh, that was exercise one. I'm just gonna go ahead and clear that. Um, so there we go. There's all the code for exercise one. Go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, so exercise two. Take the current existing shopping list and ask the user to add a number of items to the list. For example, if someone enters three, then prompt them for input to append items to the list. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so as you can see, I've already got some boilerplate code here for you. Uh, so this is the amount to add. So we're asking people how many items they want to be able to add. Uh, and then we have a counter and we're doing a while loop. So yeah, so this is going to loop over the amount of times that we specify inside here. This has already been done for us. So now the question is actually adding it to a shopping list. Uh, take the current existing shopping list and ask the user to add a number of items. Oh, whoops. Okay, let's not, not leave that. And we'll go ahead and we'll get rid of that. It's saying use the existing shopping list, which is this one. And then while counter is equal to that, uh, so we need to do hoo, 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 user underscore input is equal to input, what would you like to add? Question mark. So then somebody inputs something here, and then we just do shopping list dot append 
the user input. Um, and just so that you're aware, we actually don't have to keep constantly putting this into a variable. The only reason I do this is just because it's a little bit easier for you guys to read what's happening. This makes more sense than if I just were to cut this out and then put it directly in here. But this is equally as valid. Um, so just so that you're aware. Um, yeah, and then that should work. So if we go ahead uh, and then at the end of this, we will print the shopping list. Oh, whoops. So this is still running. I've just removed the print statement. So all of this stuff at the top here will still happen. Actually, we don't even need this. Um, yeah, we actually don't even need that. Because uh, we just need to be able to use it as a variable. So there we go. I can also remove this top part here. Whoops. There we go. So we just needed the shopping list so I can actually get rid of everything else. Um, okay, so we'll just go ahead and run this. How many items do you want to add? So let's just write it out with three. Let's say, I don't know, what else do we need from a shopping list? Um, well, it's Christmas time, so let's just say, do we already have turkey? No. Turkey, um, potatoes, and carrots. Oh, why is this not working? One, two... Ah, because I've made a mistake here. Uh, carrots and what else? Let's just say uh, garlic. Oh. Wild counter. <laughs> I've made a couple of mistakes here. Okay. So why? So that would actually be that would actually go on forever. And this is the thing that I mentioned earlier uh, about being careful with your loops. <clears throat> so as you can see, one of the things that I forgot to do. Uh, was I forgot to actually increase the counter at any point. Um, so as far as this goes, because it's less than or equal to, we're actually going to want to add one to the counter right at the start. So this counter is initially zero. When it starts, it'll be set to one. It'll ask us what we want to add. It'll append it, go back up. Then it'll be two, append it, go back up. Then it'll be three, append it, and go back up. And then it'll actually be four. Um, and that will still happen, I think. I think it will still do four, even if I say three. So let's just try this again. So turkey, potatoes, carrots. Yeah, it will. Garlic. Yeah. So you can see the code is working. Um, but we actually don't want this equal to. Uh, this would be fine if we change the loop a little bit. But because the loop is starting at zero, we want to make sure this is less than. And so this is where some of this stuff gets a little bit more complicated, because now we can do this again. Turkey, potatoes, and carrots. And it works. Uh, the other option to make this work properly would be to have this set to 1. And then do less than or equal to. And we'll just put this to the end here. And now if we do the same thing, it'll work as well. So, turkey, potatoes, carrots. Okay, that works. Let's try it with a different number. Let's say we just want to add one. Turkey works. So everything's working properly, but yeah, so that's uh, a couple things that trip me up there. <clears throat> so with a while loop, you always want to make sure that you're iterating your counters. If you forget this, then uh, like I said, it'll run infinitely. Um, if you have, uh, and you want to make sure that whatever you're initializing your counter to, you want to make sure that it's the right value and you want to kind of go through in your head and think about what's going to happen at each part of this loop uh, when you're writing it. Okay, so let's move on to the challenges. So I'll go ahead and download the challenges. And we'll just go ahead and close that. And so, let's take a look at this. So challenge one code below generates a random number. Uh, make a game that loops and takes user input at the command line. If the command line, wait, takes a user, takes user's input at the command line. The input is the user's guess at what the number is. Okay, take their inputs and you should print either too high, too low, or correct guess. For example, let's assume the number is four, the game will look like this. If you enter it in two, because it's too low, it's say too low. If you enter it in five, it's too high. So then you could say, 
Uh, okay, cool. <clears throat> so, um, so as you can see, the, so the number is going to be whatever the number that you are trying. To, it's just going to be a random number that's going to get generated here. And so, with that, what we can go ahead and do is we can have. Um, so we can say guess is equal to false, and we can say while not guess um, if uh, okay. So we're gonna need a couple of variables here too this way. So guess is going to be whether guess provided is true is true or not and then we'll just say uh, while not guess we'll take user input at the command line user input is equal to ints of input guess a number okay and then if user input is less than the number print what was it too low too low if user input is greater than number print too high and if user input is equal to number print correct guess okay cool and then at this point, because this would be the correct guess, we want to go ahead and make sure that the guess is equal to true. And now we can just go ahead and run this. Uh, we want to clear. We're going to want to do this. And we're going to want to change this to challenges. Challenges.py. Oh, missing two. Oh, sorry. Uh, zero. I will change that in the example by the time that you get to it. But we'll do zero and 10. Uh, so number between zero and 10. So guess number, let's just say three. So it's too low, let's say five. It's too, is it really gonna be four? Oh, whoops, my bad. Um, that's my bad there, okay, let's try this again. Uh, so let's guess a number, let's say six. It's too low, let's... So this is the one problem with having no error catching is that every time I hit enter too fast, it's gonna cause an issue. Uh, oh. Okay, the correct number was six that time. Okay, let's guess six, six again. Six is too high. Let's try four. It's too high. One? Okay, the number was one. Um, I'm trying to get something. Okay, too low. There. So two low is working. And the number was three again. Okay, cool. So that seems to be working properly. That's what we have. Uh, the other way of doing this, if you didn't want to do this guess value here that I've put, you can actually go ahead and get rid of this. And you can do exactly what I told you not to do, where you can have an infinite, oops, an infinite loop. And then instead of saying guess is equal to true, you can just break here. And then that way the same thing will happen. So if I say one, it's too low. If I say 10, it's gonna be too high. If I say like three, five, five is too high, so it's four. Cool. And then you'll see it, it breaks out over there. Okay, so let's move on to challenge two. So take two inputs from the command line, then convert them both to an int. The first number will be the starting number, second number will be the ending number. Create a loop that goes from the starting number to the ending number and only prints the, okay, cool. So int, actually we can do two lines at the same point. Int, input, enter v, and then here I can say starting number, Ending number, and then this will be start, end, and then uh, for number in range start to end plus one uh, if number mod 2 equal to 0 print number else continue okay so let's try this so 
this should work. So basically you have a starting number here uh, that's being assigned to the start variable, an end number here which is being assigned to the ending variable, and then we're saying for each of the variables in the range start to, if you remember the end is always going to be the end value minus one, so I've just added one to it to make sure that it's um, the correct value, uh, and then inside the loop, if the number's even, print the number. So let's just say, oops. Let's say starting number is zero, ending number is 20, print all the values, so zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Uh, and then let's just run it again with something weird. So let's just say like between three and 26. Then we get four, six, eight, yeah. So this is working exactly as we'd expect. Um, yeah, not really much else to say here. Um, the only real tricky thing is we're kind of combining a couple of concepts together here. So we're combining the conditionals, uh, we're combining the continue concept, and um, yeah, okay, cool. So now let's move on to challenge three. And if I remember correctly, this one's gonna be actually pretty hard. Yes, okay, so this is a question about nesting. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so the big thing with this is don't get discouraged if you couldn't do this challenge. Um, this challenge is an adaptation of a question that I got asked on, um, I think it was, it might have even been a midterm or something. Uh, but I remember I, at some point, I can't remember if it was a course that I took actually at university or if it was a course that I took um, through some other third party, but the this is a, this is a simplification of that question. Uh, but this is the sort of question that you can expect if you want to go into computer science. This is the sort of questions that you can expect to get that are pretty difficult. Um, so using the list below, print the numbers in ascending order that should look like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <clears throat> and you can see here's the actual list that we have here. Uh, so it's a list of lists. Um, and so the pattern is that the list is in ascending order where the same index on each list is the is in ascending order, i.e. the zeroth element of the first list is in order and then the second, er, the the first if element, uh, the zero with element of the first if element of the list is two. So it's, it's, in, it's in order like this. So basically it goes, uh, if I hold alt, or sorry, uh, what is it, alt shift? Nope, okay. Um, basically it, it's each each row is in order. So it's a row and, or sorry, a column. Each column's in order. So it's a column and then a column and then a column. And that's basically the order. Um, so the simplest way to do this is with a loop counter variable and a while loop. So, Let's take a look at this. I'm actually gonna need a second here. So, what am I saying there? So I'm gonna counter. So count is equal to zero. Oh, I see it. <clears throat> and then while count is less than, what would it be? So zero, one, and two. So while count is less than two less than or equal to two. Um, print. We can't do this with just three print statements, I think. So let's just do this. So if I just go ahead and do that, I think I can just do this with three print statements. Um, why is the indentation not matching up? Um, print numbers of Count and then zero, one, two, and then count plus equals one. I think that's right. So if this is the pattern, then this then obviously these never change because this is going to be each of these actual uh, rows here. So these will never change. But with I think what I'm trying to get at here is that the pattern is that for whatever whatever number we're at in the count, we want each column to be right. So this should work. So let me just quickly before I, yeah, okay, so that works. Okay, so yeah, so, so this, is, this is a very difficult question, but basically what it's kind of showing you here is that if you think about this like a spreadsheet, um, effectively you want to just go through the columns and so to do that 
you basically just you move this up by one each time um, you could actually do no this is easier um, I'm gonna say there's another way of doing this but it's a little bit more complicated so I won't get into it but this way is actually definitely the simplest so what it's doing here is maybe this is actually better to just do a Python preview let me just show you what this looks like um, so let's go back to the first so okay so the numbers list has been created so there's the numbers list we now have a count variable that's zero and then from here now count is currently equal to zero so it's going to print numbers zero of the count which will be zero and then it's going to print numbers one of the count which is two and then it's going to print um numbers two of the count which is zero as well so basically so the columns the column is always the same and then the row is just shifting each time so if we sorry, the row is the same each time for each of the print statements and the column is shifting so that's what the second number is and you can see so now we get one and then two and then it'll go through here and it'll go um, numbers of two so it'll go to numbers first check the secondeth element which it'll then go down to here and then it's checking the count which the count is currently equal to zero which means that it's going to print three and it printed three we'll then add one to the count go back up and then now the count is equal to one and so when it comes in here it's going to go to first it's going to go to numbers which it'll check the zero if element because that's what i put here and then from there it's going to go to the what is it? What's count? Count is one. So then it's going to go and jump to the first element, which is this four right here. And then we're just going to go through, and that's basically how it works. So if that didn't make any sense, read it over a couple more times. If your brain hurts, come back to it another day. Um, multi dimensional array looping is pretty complicated, uh, to say the least. So don't worry about it if you didn't get it. Um, this example is here to be a challenge. It's, it's, supposed to be difficult so if you didn't get it don't worry about it just make sure you got the rest of the stuff and and don't worry about it this, this is supposed to be hard um so yeah so th thanks for um <clears throat> thanks for watching the video i'll go ahead and i'm just going to fix the code so that i'll fix this section here where the uh the number that's being generated is the wrong number <clears throat> or sorry the number isn't generating properly i'll go ahead and fix that so by the time that you're downloading it so you will see the uh you'll see that that's been changed. And um, yeah, if you wanna see the solutions, the solutions are just down here. You can just hit click to see the solutions. I think I did this a little bit differently. Um, yeah, I did this a little bit differently in here. So um, yeah, uh, thanks for watching the videos. And uh, if you're interested, then be sure to move on to the next module four, which we'll be talking about creating our own custom functions. So hopefully I'll see you there.